issues that impact the entire country come down especially hard on the Empire State of New York. And as we celebrate Women's History Month, we are happy to welcome for the first time the first female governor in New York history, yeah. Kathy Hochul. <laughs> really important questions. Mm -hmm. I want to know if you would like to do a dentist commercial. <laughs> Since you are a governor of New York State, maybe in South Dakota. You know, I have to say this, I would not go to Texas to have my teeth done. Yeah. And I would not take any compensation for it. And uh, the most I can accept as a gift is $15 in the state of New York. I don't think that gets me a cup of coffee. So, <laughs> so, so we're good. Okay. Uh, my teeth may not look as good as that, but I'm not going to violate any ethics laws. I assure okay. you. <laughs> over as governor at a very, should we say, precarious time. So Andrew Cuomo had resigned amidst sexual harassment allegations. New York was the epi epicenter of COVID. Mm -hmm. And although you were lieutenant governor for six years, you could say that not a, lo a lot of people even maybe knew you by name. Now, you were, re you were elected in 2022, but take us back to the time of that appointment. How were you feeling? Well, I found out with the rest of the nation that I'd be governor. I didn't get any advance warning. I was wow. told, we kind of thought something could happen, but I officially learned by watching national television. Oh, wow. Um, I immediately went into the next room, went down to my knees, and prayed to God for strength and wisdom. Wow. Got up and said, I'm the governor. I'm the wow. governor. And that has helped me. And I'll tell you, literally days later, before I was sworn in, I went to the county fair. I grew up in Buffalo. Oh. Daughter of steel workers, granddaughter of steel workers. My family started very humbly. And it was always a big deal for us to go to the county fair. We didn't have any money, but you could go look at the animals, you could go on yes. the rides. So I went there, and a mother came up to me with her probably four year old daughter. And she said, Look, she's going to be a woman governor. That means you can be anything. Oh. And all of a sudden, I realized that weight was on me. That, that, this was beyond governing a state. As the very first governor in the state that launched the women's right movement back in 1848, still the first governor ever that was a woman who was also a mom and now a grandma, that it meant something to other people. So I knew I had to get it right. People are going to have me under a microscope. Course, I had right. to be, I'd be perfect in every sense of the word. And I was, I'm human. I make mistakes. We, we get right back up and you go at it again. And I want to be as bold and as audacious and courageous and a risk taker the way I've always been as the governor of the state of New York because this is a complicated state to govern. Yeah. yeah. But I cherish and love every single day of it. And every morning I get up and I do my makeup with my granddaughter watching me on FaceTime. <laughs> she, she thinks her grandma is a makeup artist. <laughs> uh, that, that's okay. That's okay. Sophia watches me and I talk to her. She's almost two. She's listening to me. And, and I have a picture of her in the governor's residence. And it's a lot of space. She gets to run around there. But a picture of her above the mantle walking. Remember the picture of Jack Kennedy and, yeah. his, and yes. Don John walking? Yes. You just saw their backs walking. I have that picture of me walking down the hall of governors, which is all <coughs> pictures of men staring down at us. And I'm oh. holding her little hand walking. And that's the image I want people to have. That and it's not with, photoshopped either, right? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I did. I waited till I got it back from the palace uh, to, make sure, to make sure they got it right. Well, Governor, I want to ask you about one of the many issues that New Yorkers are facing in the whole country is uh, the issue around immigration. So um, governors across, uh, mayors across the uh, country, I should say, are pleading for more federal government assistance. New York alone had 178,000 migrants who came into the state, and there's been issues around housing, uh, schooling, medicine for these people, and it's draining billions from city budgets. Now, Mayor Adams has raised the idea of changing sanctuary city laws so that migrants aren't flocking to major cities. Do you, do you support this? And what do you think needs to be done to fix this influx of migration? Well, first of all, let's just say we are a nation of immigrants. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. sitting here because, because my grandparents were teenagers in Ireland leaving great poverty. Mm -hmm. Grandpa started as a migrant farm worker himself in South Dakota in the wheat fields. Mm -hmm. They were domestic servants in Chicago until they heard about the promised land of Buffalo, New York. You could make steel with your hands and get a good paying union job. Yeah. And that's what changed my whole family's history. Mm -hmm. 
Those jobs are here in the state of New York. I have 460,000 open jobs today. Wow. I have 5,000 farm jobs that I need filled so we can plant the crops that will be feeding New Yorkers people all over the country. But there has to be a legal path, a path we can control because the surge, and this is the largest migration of humanity since World War II. Mm -hmm. And this is unprecedented. In the past, we've had, usually the man comes first, mm -hmm. gets a job, maybe finds a little place to live, and then sends money back and then brings the family. Mm -hmm. What we have now, over half of the migrants that have arrived are moms with children yeah. Yeah. who are so desperate for a better life for the kids, they went through harm's way and they arrived. Now, this is a federal problem. Yeah. I worked on the last major immigration bill that was enacted when I was pregnant with my son, who's now the father of that little girl. So we're talking a long time ago. Yeah. And there was a bipartisan bill. Remember Tip O'Neill and Ronald Reagan? Yes. Yes. And Democrats and Republicans worked together. Maybe that crazy time in our history? And that's why I'll never give up on our democracy, because I was a young, impressionable attorney on Capitol and I saw that happen. So, Fast forward to today, which is your question. We are doing the best we can to manage the influx, get people housing. It is very expensive. Mm -hmm. And uh, the state of New York is in for about $4.3 billion. I would like federal money. And guess where the federal money is and why it's being held up? Mm -hmm. The Republicans in Congress mm -hmm. and in the Senate said no because Donald Trump called them up one right. night the night before, they should have voted on this mm -hmm. to send 2,000 more agents or Border Patrol people to the border. Mm -hmm. I need some on the northern border, by the way. We mm -hmm. border Canada. Mm -hmm. Money for states like New York, that would have helped us a lot. And just have a different path to citizenship and, and look at the asylum and whether it's too loose right now, the way it's being used and probably abused. So I blame the Republicans now. The mess was bipartisan before that. Democrats and Republicans have not successfully found a way to have a path to legal citizenship because the employers want this. And I have said to the 10 Republicans in the House of Representatives who represent the great state of New York, told, saw them at the State of the Union. I saw them. I said, why don't you all march into Speaker Johnson's office tomorrow because there's 10 of you. You know that crazy Freedom Caucus? There's only 11 of them. <laughs> so use your voice. Say, my state needs this passed the bill that was a bipartisan yeah. compromise between yeah. conservative Republicans and Democrats, the president, and all was going to happen just a couple of weeks ago, and Donald Trump said, no, I don't want Joe Biden to look good like he solved a problem. Right. Yeah. And I'm not, they, they admit that. It's yeah. outrageous. And so that's the answer to the problem long term. I still believe it can happen, but I want pressure on everyone's Republican members of Congress to get out there, do this for our country. If you represent the state of New York, by God, do it for your home state, the people who sent you that job.